long ago and far away in enchanted lands across the seas lived kings and queens, princes and princesses, good fairies and wicked witches, ferocious giants and gentle dwarfs. Their adventures and stories have been told for hundreds of years. Open the pages and listen to the words and you too can join the magical world of Once Upon a Time. The Brave Tin Soldier Once upon a time, there were 25 tin soldiers. And they were all brothers because they'd all been made from one large tin spoon. They were all neatly dressed in red, blue and white uniforms and each one held a little rifle. As soon as the toy maker had made them, he put them in a little wooden box on a shelf in his shop. For months, they waited patiently, packed into the box like sardines, until one day, a man came into the shop and bought the box. This will make a fine present for my son's birthday, he said. When the little boy saw the box, he rattled it and tried to guess what was in it. When he opened it, he shouted out, Tin soldiers! And as the little boy shouted this out, he clapped his hands with excitement. Then he took a close look at the soldiers and noticed that they were all exactly the same. Except for one, who was slightly different from the rest. He only had one leg, as he was the last to be made, and there wasn't enough tin left to give him another leg. But this brave little soldier stood upright and proud like the others, even though he only had one leg to stand on and the others had two. The boy stood the one-legged soldier right in front of his paper castle. This beautiful little castle looked just like a real castle in miniature. Delicate paper trees and a lake made from a mirror stood in front of it. It was a beautiful scene and it filled the little tin soldier's heart with joy especially when he saw the pretty little girl who stood at the door of the castle. She had been intricately cut out of paper and was dressed in a dancer's costume with a red rose at the waist that was as big as her face. The beautiful girl stretched her arms high above her head because she was a ballerina. One of her legs was raised so high that the little tin soldier couldn't see it and thought she only had one leg. That's the wife for me, he thought. Hmm, but she's far too grand. Her home is a beautiful castle, and I live in a simple wooden box. Still, I might as well try to make friends with her. But although he couldn't stop looking at the beautiful ballerina, he couldn't muster up enough courage to speak to her. Later that evening, all the other tin soldiers were packed into their box and everybody went to bed. As soon as everyone in the house was fast asleep, all the other toys started dancing round the room. The coloured pencils stood upright and started to do a merry little tap dance. The top spun around furiously and the clockwork mouse whizzed along the floor. Two wooden dolls played happily on a little seesaw, while a tiny clown balanced in the middle. The only toys who didn't move were the little tin soldier and the ballerina. On the strike of twelve, the lid flew off a little wooden box and a cheeky little jack-in-the-box leapt up on his spring. He laughed heartily, and as he laughed, all the bells in his hat made a loud jingling noise. Tin soldier, said the jack-in-the-box, please keep your eyes to yourself. But the soldier stood firm and pretended that he hadn't heard him. You'll be sorry when tomorrow comes, said the jack-in-the-box. All the toys made such a noise that they woke the canary, so he decided to join in the fun. At sunrise, all the toys went back into their boxes and the canary flew back into his cage. All was quiet again. 
As soon as the children of the house woke up, the little tin soldier was put on the windowsill. But he had only been standing there for a few minutes when the window flew open and he fell out head first into the garden below. To this day, nobody knows whether it was the cheeky Jack in the Box who pushed him out or the draught caused by the wind. The poor little soldier suffered a bad fall because he'd fallen from one of the rooms at the top of the house. His leg stuck straight up in the air and he was left upside down in the garden with his rifle caught between two large rocks. He was completely stuck and he couldn't budge an inch. When they noticed that he had gone, the servant and the little boy dashed straight out into the garden to look for him and although they very nearly trod on him, they couldn't find him. The tin soldier was so sad to see them passing by and wanted to shout out, I'm here! But he didn't think it was the proper thing for a soldier to do as he was dressed in uniform. Then it started to rain, and the rain fell so heavily that the tin soldier almost drowned in a little pool of water. When the downpour was over, two street urchins who had crept into the garden wandered by. Look what I found, said one of them. It's a little tin soldier. Let's put him in a little boat and send him for a sail. So they picked up a few sheets of old newspaper and made them into a little boat. They lifted the tin soldier up and stood him in it. And in his head, the little soldier kept repeating, Leave me alone. He desperately wanted to shout these words out, but he knew it wasn't the correct thing for a soldier in uniform to do. So he kept quiet. The two urchins sailed the little boat along the gutter. As it drifted along, they ran alongside it, clapping their hands. Oh, what huge waves and a strong current there was in the gutter. The boat bobbed up and down, and it whirled around with such speed that the tin soldier felt seasick. But he was a brave little soldier, and he stood upright without moving a muscle. He kept looking straight ahead and held his rifle tightly at his side. Suddenly, the boat came to a long stretch of gutter that was covered over. It was darker than his box. I wonder what's going to happen to me now, said the little tin soldier. I'm sure it's all that jack-in-the-box's fault. Oh, how I wish I had the little ballerina with me in the boat. If she were here, I wouldn't care, even if it were twice as dark as this. Suddenly, a large water rat appeared. Where's your passport? asked the rat. Come on, show me your passport. But the tin soldier didn't reply. He just kept on clutching his rifle very tightly indeed. The boat drifted away and the rat chased after it. Stop him! Stop him! He hasn't shown me his passport! shouted the rat. But the current grew stronger and stronger and the tin soldier could see daylight ahead where the covered part of the gutter ended and what a horrible sight he could see before him as he bobbed along in the little boat. The gutter emptied straight out into a drain and he was heading straight for it. It was as dangerous for him to be swept into this as it would be for us to sail over a waterfall. But it was no use him crying out even if he'd wanted to because he was so near to the end that he couldn't stop. I wish I was on dry land and in the arms of the ballerina, he thought to himself. And then the boat swept over the side. But still, the brave little soldier clutched his rifle and kept completely still. It's time to turn over to side two.